Hello everyone, Alex VR here from Between Realities. Skiva and I are here at AWE 2022 in Santa Clara, California. This event brings out the latest in VR and AR technologies from the world's leading companies, and we're bringing you the best from the show floor starting right now. And I am joined by Kim Oberg, Director of Sales at Haptex. What have you brought to share with everyone at AWE? Haptex has brought our DK2 system. We have two of them here and we've got them set up in two different experiences. This is a pneumatically operated system, so Haptex always uses microfluidics in our work. This one happens to be the microfluidic is air. So we start with an air source and it sends air into our air controller. The air source is what we call a smart compressor because not only does it input air into the air controller, it is also a vacuum, so it pulls air out. And our air controller acts as like a traffic cop. It listens to our SDK, the software development kit, tells the air controller how much air to send to which one of our 133 actuators in each hand. When I hold my glasses, my fingers conform to the shape of the, the object that, I, that I'm manipulating. And we do the exact same thing with these actuators. And we have the ability to modulate them quite quickly um, and in modulating them, inflating them and deflating them quickly, that also uh, conveys the sense of friction which our brains interpret as texture. Um, our next generation, we're hoping to bring it out late next year. Uh, the price point there because that's going to be our first commercially available product. Um, so we're hoping that that price is going to be significantly less than what we're offering the DK2 at. I am now joined by Paul Brady, president and co-founder of Resolution Games. Demio's on the screen behind us. Are those AR glasses? Those are AR glasses, and that is Demio on AR glasses. It's not the full game. We've only had the consumer dev kit for about three weeks now, but we got a little experience together to demo it so people could see the potential of what it might be like to have a tabletop RPG experience in AR. Demio's average playtime sessions are like two and three hours. So like the ability to be in AR where you can see your environment around you too uh, is an option I think a lot of players will really appreciate in the future. And obviously AR has a lot of potential as a gaming platform in the future too. So we want to make sure that one of our biggest IPs is there. I am now joined by Matt Tullis, VP of XR at Ultraleap. What has Ultraleap brought to show off to everybody at AWE this year? Uh, we're showing our hand tracking solutions, um, specifically uh, hand tracking for VR and mixed reality devices. Uh, we're showing a few different headsets here behind me um, where we have both integrated and uh, what we have here with the Pico where we actually take our cameras and you attach them to the Pico Neo 3 headset. We believe hand tracking is going to be to VR and AR what the touch screen was to mobile computing. Like, it's going to open up the market to everybody. Right now, people need to use game controllers. That's not for everyone. You know, the, the partnership we're doing with Pico is really going after VR training and enterprise use cases, where we've worked with companies like Lufthansa to train flight attendants. They don't know how to use game controllers. If you want to bring anyone into your VR experience and AR experience, hand tracking is the perfect way. We all know how to use our hands. And in the same way that the mobile phone ecosystem exploded when they brought in good touch screens, that's what hand tracking is going to bring to XR. I am now being joined by Stephen Pryor, who is here with ET Controllers. Tell us a little bit about what's under the hood with these things in this current iteration. 
Yeah, sure. So um, ET is our first direct-to-consumer product as an XR controller. So we've had a lot of interest from uh, VR artists with the, the nice precision control that you can get with ET. Uh, we've developed our own trackers, um, which can connect, so it's modular. So people are liking the modularity of them. Um, also, we've had a lot of interest from the VR chat community, just because of the precise finger tracking. Like everyone wants to be in the metaverse these days. Everyone wants to feel that sense of presence. And having your hands in VR is, is what you need for that feeling. So ET provides that in spades with its finger tracking. So we're in production right now. Um, we're expected to ship uh, next two months. Oh, really? So, yeah. The next, next two months to our backers. Uh, we, you know, extremely fortunate. We've got a very good understanding community that have been behind us all the way. So we've got about 400 units that we'll be shipping out in the next couple of months. And we're having another production run later in the year as well for more pre-orders. I am now being joined by Joseph Artuso from OpenBCI. What have you guys brought to AWE? OpenBCI has been making uh, open source tools for neuroscience since about 2014. We started out as a Kickstarter and then just kind of turned into a profitable business. Uh, and over the years, we kept seeing our customers taking our existing dev kits and our existing PCBs, kind of Frankensteining them together into this like multimodal sensor data collection system and like strapping a VR headset on over it. And they kept asking for this in surveys and they kept asking for it in the research that they were doing. And so a few years ago, we set out to build kind of like everything in the kitchen sink, VR plus sensor fusion device. And that's called Gallia. We've got eight um, EEG sensors on the scalp and they're made of this conductive polymer that we designed ourselves. It's really comfortable. It doesn't require any gels or extra, you know, kind of setup. You just sort of strap it on and go. Um, and then the face pad itself, we've embedded uh, about five or six other types of physiological sensors into the, the VR face pad. So that's sort of custom built on our own. It's got muscle sensors. It's got a sensor for heart rate and heart rate variability. It can detect, uh, without camera-based eye tracking, it can detect eye movements and it can also detect something called uh, the galvanic skin response. That's kind of like uh, a measure of stress or uh, the change in you know the skin activity and the sweat on your on your skin. So definitely not launching it uh, as a consumer device initially. There's not there's not a, a need for it in the home you know to augment your own gaming experience. So our effort with Gallia is actually to go after kind of those later customer sets. It's going to be for researchers that are at the intersection of VR, AR, neuroscience, computer science, psychology, as well as consumer tech companies that are looking at what is the next generation of computers going to be like. Um, and we'll be selling the about 250 beta units um, attached to the Vario Aero. Things could be worse because I am currently joined by Jerry Ellsworth from Tilt5. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you have brought with you to AWE. Uh, we're showing off a couple things. So we're showing off Mixcast that lets you composite your games that you're playing with you or your friends and you can stream it to YouTube or Twitch or wherever you want or record videos. That's super exciting. Makes it really look good from an outside perspective. We're showing off our new uh, game board that has some uh, modularity to it. You can have this giant like battle map if you're doing role playing type games, D and D stuff like that, or you can tip it up if you need like this huge volume to work, uh, like you know action games, or you're doing uh, professional mm -hmm. things with it where you need to do data visualization. And so, if I'm understanding correctly, right now you there's you basically need a machine powering each individual headset in the experience, right? Yeah, well actually we're internally testing drivers to allow you to run up to four glasses on one PC. We're also internally testing our Android SDK, so you can just plug into Android uh, phones, so you can run one headset off an Android phone. 
And then we're working on all the hardware pieces so we can plug into iOS, which will be a little bit down the road. So we're trying to support a wide variety of devices. How far out do you think we are from maybe having that multiple headset experience with one machine? Um, you know, the challenge is we're trying to figure out the UI. You plug in four headsets, you have a game running, like who's going to be player one, player two, or if you launch two instances of the game, like how do you make you know headset one go to game one? And there's a there's some things that we're learning and figuring out. So I don't know. It could be a matter of weeks, maybe a month and a half, two, I don't know. We got to in, in the near future. Really near. And oh my god, I almost forgot to mention we're in mass production now. It's been a huge lift to get to this point. You know, we were working in China, we had to build robotic fixtures, send it over to China, and we couldn't set foot in the factory because of COVID. And now we've got the production up, we're fulfilling all our back orders, and by the end of the summer, well, probably not after AWE, the sales are pretty brisk right now, but we'll be uh, caught up and, and getting people more and more of their kits. That's all from us at AWE 2022. For more of the latest updates in VR, be sure to subscribe, check out uploadvr.com, and visit Between Realities for more AlexVR and Skiva. Thanks for watching.